Homeless Alliance. They want 10 to 15 parking spots near the campus police department so they can sleep overnight safely. Student homeless crisis, many of them are looking to the garage as a place to pull in for the night. The parking spaces will give people a safe place to sleep. CSU, shame on you! Leading the group was sociology student Celine Chandler, who is housed now but spent much of last year homeless. I slept outside. I slept at bus stops. I slept here on campus on benches. Chandler is one of three students who will meet with University President Mary Papazian. So we have to use the They're not going to meet our demands. Uh, we'll people are going to be They're completely um, against it. They don't want to give the students a place to park their car. <laughs> they said it'll cost too much. There's many times I've told my story and I would say a five to 10 second clip of it was used. So I never really get to tell the whole story. <laughs> Um, I'm a former foster youth, so I was in the system of care for foster youth in California um, since age 15. And I graduated high school, went straight to San Jose State. Um, I was from a small town, Merced, not many resources. And um, I came here on a Greyhound, moved into the dorms. And I thought I'd be stably housed and my foster care was supposed to pay for college and housing. A lot of those resources did not come through. And my first time I was homeless was in between semesters and the winter break of 2011 to 2012. And I slept outside, I got pneumonia um, there weren't many resources that I knew about. I was new to the city, the county. It was really difficult navigating this system of care. Um, there are some resources out there, but they're very limited. They're very uh, restricted. Um, so I ended up back on the street. Uh, Monday through Friday, I had a meal plan, but on the weekends, it didn't cover the weekends. So I was sort of hungry on the weekends um, and didn't have any support from the school at the time and ended up homeless again when the semester was over. So June 1st of 2012, I was back homeless and that was the beginning of about a three year time period where I was homeless, unstably housed, uh, couch surfing, staying with friends, um, other students, uh, elders in the church. Um, I lived in a youth shelter downtown. Unfortunately, it was a 90 day stay and they kicked me out after 60 days because I was working three jobs and couldn't get back by curfew or participate in the program. Uh, my mom gave me her car, so I ended up sleeping in the car. Even after it broke down, it was still served as um, a shelter. I took showers in the dorm room on campus and during the summer when school was out I just had a gym membership and I'd, I'd pay monthly and have access to their showers. I made it look good though. Um, if you were my friend and I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. Uh, my professors didn't know and I, I sort of hid it. I was ashamed and so by... I would say by 2015, after about three years of um, unstable housing, I got a phone call. And I remember I was sitting at the library, which is my main hangout spot. I'd crashed there a lot too, um, until the security kicked you out or kicked me out. But I got a phone call at the library, MLK Library downtown, and they said that my name came up for a housing voucher and a social worker assured me that I'd get my own apartment within the next couple months and she followed through with that promise. Well, that gave me the safety and security um, to continue in my fight to end homelessness. homelessness. But there is a larger homeless issue. Um, we have one of the largest tent cities in America at Destination Homes. Leave. our motto is nothing about us without us 
The Lived Experience Advisory Board focuses on creating a platform for people like myself to engage in the system of care. Uh, we give feedback to nonprofits that are service providers. Um, we give input with the city of San Jose and housing developments that target the homeless. Um, we evaluate programs uh, like outreach programs and shelters. We interview staff, we interview clients, we collect the data and we come up with recommendations based on the lived experience perspective. Again, our motto is nothing about us without us. I encourage all service providers, government agencies, housing uh, developers, nonprofits, researchers, policymakers, decision makers, stakeholders, to include the voices of people with lived experience. The, my experience has been that most people who are even currently unhoused want to give back or currently do give back to the community in some type of way. Every board should have someone with lived experience. I will say, let's, let's open the door for people with lived experience. Let's give them opportunities uh, and real leadership development so that they can spearhead the movement to end homelessness. Mm -hmm.